if you're looking for a tactical flashlight solution for your rifle, the Phoenix tactical flashlight, pressure switch and mount may be a great option for you. Watch this video. I will unbox the mount and the pressure switch and then fit the PD35 tactical light. I will also go through positioning considerations for the tactical light, the mount and the pressure switch. I was looking for a weapon mounted flashlight solution and I decided to go with a pressure switch and mount from Phoenix to support my PD35 flashlight. The AER-02 version 2 tactical remote pressure switch, this is how it comes from your retailer. So we open up the packet. Inside, you've got four small cable ties. And then you've got the remote pressure switch itself and the tail end cap. This one comes with a small cable, so you haven't got a big coil attached to your weapon. The cable itself, that's 23 centimeters long. The remote tactical pressure switch has got silent buttons, so it's perfect for tactical use or hunting. The pressure pad itself is 30 millimeters long. It features a switch, this one, which is a constant on option, and it's got a separate noiseless pressure pad switch here, and the function may vary depending which torch model you have. The switch body, it features some little notches at the ends. That is for when you use the cable ties to mount this to your rifle. You'll also notice on the bottom, it's got a hook and loop fastener. You can remove the sticky back from this, stick that onto your rifle, and then you can mount the switch and remove the switch when you want. And these switches, they're rated for 100,000 activations. This thing weighs 1.4 ounces, which is 40 grams, so it's quite light. The T6 aluminium hard anodized tail, it's got a screw adapter, and that screws directly in place of the end cap on your flashlight. It's matte black, so it's got a glare-free finish. It's also waterproof to IP68 standard, which means it's submersible to two meters for 30 minutes. Let's take a look at the ALG00 flashlight ring. So again, it's got some of the features on the back. So as you can see, the weight is 56 grams, which is 1.98 ounces and that excludes the Allen wrench that comes in the packet. Uh, you've got one Allen wrench and two spare rubber cushions. It's precision machined. It's anodized matte black finish. So let's open up the packet and see what it looks like on the inside. Trying to open it carefully. mount itself. As you can see I'm opening it up nice and neatly. Allen key. Right, that you get. And there you've got the spare two rubber mounts. So this is how the mount comes. Comes fitted already with two rubber mounts. Uh, and you've got your spare two rubber mounts. The bottom of the mount's got a quick release mechanism. So squeeze both sides and it retracts the claws. And then you use the Allen key to open up the bolt so you can fit the flashlight. So it's a quick release mount, but not a quick release flashlight which would have been quite cool if there was a quick release mechanism on it. Put the torch in, and then close the mount, line up the bolt, and there's a groove in the top bit. And 
Might need to put the other two bits of rubber in there as well, I'm not sure. Okay, so that's how it's fitted. Looks pretty cool actually. And then to fit the tail switch, remove the end cap, get your new tail switch, operating the tail switch you've got the constant on button and then you've got the press to illuminate button. So constant on, off and then you've got the press to illuminate. Now that we've got our tactical flashlight fitted inside the mount and the pressure switch fitted to the rear end cap of the flashlight, we need to mount that onto our firearm. Today I'm going to be mounting the flashlight onto my Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. I'm going to mount my flashlight onto the Picatinny rail, so I need to squeeze the clips to disengage the lugs and then slide this mount onto the Picatinny rail. There you go. So that clips into place nicely. Some considerations when mounting your tactical flashlight are that you need to decide which side of your firearm you're going to mount your flashlight. In my case, I'm right-handed, so my support hand is my left hand. Therefore, I need the tactical flashlight away from my support hand. Ideally, I'd like my flashlight mounted as far forward as possible. However, it must not interfere with the flash eliminator or muzzle brake. If you have a shorter barrel and your muzzle brake or flash eliminator is around the end of your forend, you may want to move your flashlight further back so that it doesn't interfere with the rifle's performance. It may change your point of impact or the way the rifle behaves if your muzzle flash is hitting your flashlight. Something else to consider is that the front of your flashlight will get very dirty with all the carbon, etc., coming out of the front of your flash eliminator. So where do we mount the pressure switch? There are a few options for mounting your pressure switch. If you're going to be shooting your rifle and be dexterous, i.e. with left or right hand, depending on the environment, you may want to mount your pressure switch on the top of your rifle. If you are purely going to be using it with your strong hand, you can look at mounting the pressure switch on the side of your rifle. Basically, whatever works for you, it's gonna to be totally down to you as an individual and your preference. For me, I grip my rifle fore end like this. My thumb is usually placed on the top. Therefore, having the pressure switch on the top of the rifle, for me, would work best. That way I can activate this pressure switch or I can move my thumb slightly forward and activate the always on. Another consideration is the cable discipline. I don't like cables everywhere. So what I'm looking at trying to do is minimize the amount of possible snagging that is gonna happen with this cable. So I'm keeping it all round one side of my rifle and hopefully the cable ties, when I use them in a second, are gonna help keep that nice and out of the way. However, what I'm gonna do before I use the cable ties is use some electrical tape, just so I can fit it in place to make sure that it is where I want it to go. So it's sitting just behind the fifth rib on my top rail. So I'm gonna need two pieces of electrical tape. Make sure that's sitting in the correct place. I'm just going to tape that into place.
So just pulling it into my shoulder, I can just test that I've got it set up into the right position. As you can see, I don't really have to move my hand to operate the light. I think for me, that's good. If I was solely going to be doing it with my left hand, I may consider putting the switch on the left hand side of the rifle. Let me just swap hands. So that still works shooting from my weak shoulder. As you'll notice though, the cable does get in the way of my support hand slightly. Uh, proper stowage of that, that should be fine. I'll keep it out of the way. Something to consider when you're looking at the mounts is whether you need quick release or not. Because this is a quick release, it only moves the teeth on the inside and there's no way of actually tightening the mount up to the Picatinny rail. As you can see, there is a slight amount of wobble. It's not gonna fall off. There's no way that's gonna go anywhere because the teeth are holding it in. However, there is a slight amount of wobble on there. So I've decided I'm going to use the sticky mount just because it looks hopefully a bit neater than the electrical tape that I've got around the end at the moment. So I'll just leave that there. What I'm going to do, I've just started cutting, but I'm just going to trim it, take the ends off. Uh, the reason for that is I don't really want it poking out over the ends of my Picatinny rail. So I'm just going to trim it so it's the same width as the top of my Picatinny rail and then I can stick the pressure switch on top. There you go, that's gonna be about the right width. Quick snip of the tape. Right, let's get rid of that. Also trim off a little bit on the end because otherwise it's gonna do nothing, it's flapping off. Okay, so that looks about the right length now. Peeling the sticky backing off, get the sticky strip and we fit that on top of the Picatinny rail. Make sure it's nice and straight. And just push that down firm. Then we get a pressure switch and that just presses down into place. That looks much neater now. No tape, wiring is out of the way. That looks pretty good. You can get a Picatinny mount that the pressure switch slots into, so that would make it a lot more permanent and quite a bit neater. Also, you don't run the risk of it being pulled off. Although it fixes on there pretty good. I've just swapped the mount around just so that the bolt is on the bottom and the reason why I've done that is I just thought what I might be able to do is do something about this loose cable. What I don't want it to happen is this to get snagged on anything. So my plan is to loosen the bolt off. Hopefully there's enough room for it. I can put the cable behind the bolt and then screw the bolt back. And it shouldn't damage the cable. But what it does do is it's going to keep that cable out of the way. So that looks a bit neater. And I'm going to cable tie this cable out of the way. So put that on there. So there you go, so that keeps the cable all nice and out of the way. Snip off the end. That's a much neater solution. Thank you very much for watching. I'll drop a link for the flashlight 
the mount and the pressure switch in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, it will be great to hear from you, so drop a comment below. Thank you very much for watching.